I experienced that many C# -sharp developers struggle with the F# -sharp syntax when they see F# -sharp code for the first time. I believe F# -sharp code is not scary at all, and I believe you can learn the basic syntax in less than 5 minutes. Let me prove that by converting this small C# -sharp method here into F# -sharp. First I remove all semicolons as these are just unnecessary noise. Next, I also remove the curly brackets. These are not needed as well, as the f -sharp compiler takes white spaces seriously. A block is defined by indentation, a concept you might already know from the Python programming language. In f -sharp, most code lives in modules instead of classes, which are public by default. And methods are called functions, which are defined using the let keyword. In f -sharp, there are no statements, but expressions, which always return a value. The last expression in a function defines the return value of the function, so the return statement is not needed as well. The f -sharp compiler is clever enough to infer the return type of a function from the last expression of the function, so I can remove the return type as well. Now I have to make a bigger transformation from imperative programming, which is changing state with statements, to functional programming, which is transforming immutable data, and I do this by applying link u. In f -sharp, functions and data structures are kept separate, so I'm going to replace the where extension method with the filter function of the sequence module. And I'm replacing the dot with the pipe operator to define a sequence of function calls in a similar style like link your extension methods, a concept you are probably familiar with from batch and shell scripting. By doing that, I notice that I actually do not need the temp variable, but instead, I can just continue piping the filtered characters into the concat function. And of course I have to apply the same steps to this little lambda function here, which are in f -sharp defined using the fun keyword. We are almost done. In f -sharp, parentheses do not belong to the function definition, but are used like in math to group expressions. And if the expression is just a single value, I can skip the parentheses completely. For the strip characters parameter, the f -sharp compiler is again clever enough to infer its type from the usage, so I can skip that as well. And with this, the transformation is complete. The f -sharp syntax is not that scary, isn't it? Let's start with the most basic types, primitives. As every programming language, f -sharp supports various numeric primitives like ints and floats, as well as strings, which behave pretty much like those in c -sharp. The problem with primitives is that these are not type-safe, in that sense that for example different floats can have different semantical meaning, but can easily be mixed up as we can see in this example. In f -sharp, such issues are often addressed using so-called single-case unions, a concept I will come back later. For now, let's assume you want to stick to numeric primitives for reasons of simplicity or performance. In this case, the powerful f -sharp type system provides another solution, which is called unit of measure, which allows us to express the semantical meaning of a numeric value explicitly in the code. Now that the compiler knows about the semantical differences, it takes care that such variables and values are not mixed up accidentally. This concept is quite helpful to avoid bugs without introducing any overhead and also improves the readability of the code, so consider using it when you want to stick to numeric primitives. The next most basic and most commonly used types are containers, like lists, arrays and maps. f -sharp basically provides the same kind of containers like c -sharp. Notice that the separator for initializing a container with items is not the comma, but the semicolon. The key difference between f -sharp and c -sharp containers is that f -sharp lists, arrays and maps are immutable. The benefit of immutability is of course that unexpected side effects can be avoided by design as these containers cannot be modified. Instead, we will transform existing containers into new containers using filters and transformations, a concept you are probably already familiar with from using link queue in c -sharp. Let's move on to tuples, which are the most simplest custom types in f -sharp. f -sharp tuples are very similar to value tuples in modern c -sharp. We define a tuple by simply combining values and variables with a comma. In contrast to C-sharp, the surrounding parentheses are often not needed. Because of their convenient usage, tuples are much more frequently used in F-sharp than in C-sharp. Nevertheless, from clean code perspective, I recommend using tuples only if the meaning is obvious, for example the x and the y coordinate of a point, 
or locally within functions where the meaning can be grasped from the context easily, otherwise excessive usage of tuples can lead to increased code complexity. Which brings us to record types. Record types in f -sharp are used like records in c -sharp to define data structures of multiple named data items. f -sharp and c -sharp records are quite comparable. In both languages, records are reference types which behave like value objects, which means two records are equal if the values of all their properties are equal. The key difference between a record in c -sharp and a record in f -sharp is again that the record in f -sharp is immutable by default. Using the primary constructor syntax in c -sharp not only provides an even more concise way to define a record, it also defines a record which is immutable by default as well. As immutable records obviously cannot be modified, both languages provide the with expression to update properties while creating a copy of a given record. Tuples and records are also called end types, as these combine individual data items into a single type. The counterpart are so called or types which allow us to model alternatives. In f -sharp, the discriminated union type is such an OR type. In its simplest form, union types could be compared to c -sharp enums. But union types are much more powerful than c -sharp enums because each case of a union type can carry additional data, which allows us to model alternatives very explicitly. Unfortunately, c -sharp doesn't support real union types yet. Instead, we would probably use inheritance to model alternatives. And with this, we could simulate union types to some extent, as shown in this video. The most used and built in union type in f -sharp is probably the option type, which allows us to express much more explicitly the absence of a valid value than returning simply null, which is still a common anti pattern in C. -sharp. Last but not least, union types are a great tool to address the primitive obsession issue discussed in this video by defining so called single case unions. In C. -sharp, we would use records with a single property in this case. But once you start using single case unions, you will quickly realize that these are more convenient to use in such cases. Tip number 61. Don't use manual procedures. A shell script or batch file will execute the same instructions in the same order time after time. And f -sharp is a perfect fit for tooling because of its scripting capabilities. Let's jump right into a quite common use case for scripting. Parsing a log file. This log file is from one of my projects where we noticed that recently these files got quite big. The first analysis shows that some components are logging quite a lot. So let's parse the file and find out how much lines each component produces. Let's start by opening the system and the system.io namespace. Now let's fetch the log file to parse from the command line arguments. Next let's copy one line of the log file for reference. I start parsing the file by reading all the lines. And then I use the pipe operator to pipe these lines into a sequence of functions for further processing. First I want to split each line into tokens. Therefore I use the sequence module and the map function. From these tokens we want to have first, second, third, the fourth token. So let's use sequence module dot map again and grab token number four. Now let's use the group by function of the sequence module to group all same tokens together. Now let's map each group into a tuple of the token itself and the number of occurrences. Finally, let's sort this list by the count of each token and then print the result. Okay, that's it. To run this script, let's open a new terminal and simply type .NET FSI for f -sharp scripting. Then we pass the name of the script and the name of the log file. Let's run the script and check the output. Okay, almost perfect. We just forgot to cut off the trailing colon. So let's do this. Now let's run the script again. Ok, we are done. We can now see which component produces most of the log lines. And that's all what we need to get the task automated. No project setup is needed. And we still get the full power of .NET and the support of the IDE like syntax highlighting and IntelliSense. Even basic refactoring tools are available for f -sharp scripts like renaming a variable. But can we also use NuGet packages in f -sharp scripts? Let's say we want to address the excessive logging to the component responsibles. Then a chart would be great to convince them that some action is needed. In order to reference any external library in f -sharp scripts, we use the R directive. And we use the NuGet prefix to reference a NuGet package. Notice that the version number is optional. 
Next, let's open the respective namespace. And now we can use this NuGet package to plot a chart. We use the unzip function of the list module to convert the list of tuples into two lists of separate values. Let's pipe this result into a custom function, which takes those two lists. And here we use the NuGet library to create and plot the chart. That's it. Let's run the script again. And here is our chart. Awesome. And here's a pro tip. Once you have successfully automated a task, keep the script in a small dedicated Git repository for reference in case you want to automate a similar task later on again.